Right, what can I say about my next guest? We're, let's, we're talking walking primarily here, but lots of other things to talk about. Um, we've had a great summer of walks on BBC Radio Shropshire, hearing about the walks that you're doing, joining in, meeting people who love exploring our amazing Shropshire countryside. Claire and I went out with the Rail Ramblers down Church Stretton Way. They're out again this morning down there. And one walk that really caught everybody's imagination was organised by Steve Bowers from Randley. And he organised a walk called Farewell to the Towers. And it, would, it gave you some of the best views of the Ironbridge cooling towers before they're demolished. You've got another chance in a minute. Hang on. He was taken aback, though, by the number of people turned up, so much so he's doing it again today. Hello. Good morning, Eric. How many people turned up? Well, we think we had a count of about 60. 60? 60, yeah. yeah. That's uh, a hell of a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, surprised you, didn't it? It uh, certainly did, yes. Yeah. So I was thinking, there was one moment where I was thinking, Mm, is this a bit too big to leave through you with health and safety? But actually, we, you know, some of our group members got together and we, some of our, our existing group members, and we became markers within the group, and yeah. we got it, we got it through the, the whole amount of people through the gorge, and we finished on time at four o'clock. You can't argue with that. So you, you were looking at maybe at about twenty people, weren't you? Yeah, we sold tickets um, through Telford tickets, and we had. Basically, we had 15 tickets for my own personal walking group and then the rest of the tickets were sold. So up as we wanted 25, they were sold to the general public. So we all, the meeting point was the Museum of Iron. We got there, I ticked everybody off. And then because there was a bit of an event going on in the Museum of Iron anyway, I was looking there and thinking there's a lot of people on this on this grass here. Yeah. Paul, Paul, I think Paul Shotwood was doing his. That's little, that little bowl, yeah, isn't it? That yeah. little lovely piece of grass yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And we sort of were just sitting there looking. I was thinking there's a lot of people turning up here, and I thought, I'll tell you what we'll do here. Let's move everybody over to the right hand side to the grass. And I said, anybody on the walk, can you move over to the right? And they all moved. <laughs> <laughs> That was, uh, that was, <laughs> I thought, we've got a problem here. I love it. And uh, apparently, I don't know what happened, but somebody had said, or posted, because it had been shared like mad, just turn up. Yeah. And obviously, it wasn't a kind of just turn they up did. thing. Yeah. So we had lots of people who were disappointed, saying, we were, you know, we wanted to come on the walk. So I thought, you know what? Let's do it again okay. one more time, and we're actually doing it this afternoon. Where do you take them? Well, the, the route. Well, I, I had to think about the route. I was thinking, what I want to do is tease people first. So I want them to, the best sort of glimmers of the, of the towers first. So we take them up over the top, up Church Church Road, Colbrook Dale, and then you start to see them. They, you know, when you're teasing yourself, we're coming up over the top of the rotunda, mm -hmm. then we drop down into Iron Bridge, and then we walk right at pre Dale and Park, mm -hmm. where you can see the towers. That's the closest you can get to them. Then we head off then up to the sort of heights of Colbert Dale um, and the views over there. You've got a panoramic view of the whole of the, the power station there in its in its glory. Beautiful cows in the field view. Um, and we've got a lot of professional photographers in our group anyway. Um, and we got some stunning pictures. I mean, our group picture of us all standing there is probably one of the most epic pictures we've ever taken. Mm -mm. And I think people looked at it and thought, well, that's quite amazing. Yeah. So this afternoon we're going to do it differently because we're going to actually get a drone. We're going to take a drone up and we're actually going to do a view, a higher view down. So that's going to be quite an amazing picture, a lasting picture that people will remember. I've been inside one of those towers. I know, they're quite... They're, they're fabulous. People think they're just... They're um, they're, they've got a job to do, haven't yeah, they? they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the fire brigade were doing an exercise. Uh, rescue exercise and, yeah. and I, we got invited to go and talk to them about what they do rescuing people from heights and things like that yeah. and they were inside the towers wow amazing and they do they always like they are almost way so thin really they? like, yeah when you yeah. look at them from a drone's point of yeah. view they, they, they look really thin don't they yeah that's right yeah so, so well, what is it about what's the appeal about those towers I think it's a romance. It's a romance thing, isn't it? Um, I think everything has its has its day, doesn't it? And I think people, it's like coming home, isn't it? You know, when you come home, you see the Iron Bridge, you see the towers, and it's kind of a, like a a signal, like the Reekin when you're coming up the M54. You spot the Reekin. Everybody does it. Mm. Oh, can see the Reekin, mm -hmm. and it's that. If the Reekin disappeared, it'd be the same thing. Mm -mm. And it's just that warmth of knowing you, you're that that it's your home. And I think it's because it's a landmark, a landmark building. I think that's kind of what it is. People are romantic about it. I think it was brave to put them there. Well, it's a, a bit of. Well, it, it it needed to go there because it was the perfect site. I mean, they looked at many different sites for the the power station. Um, but you had the you had the railway which brought the coal. You had the the water. Perfect yeah. perfect site. But 
obviously they they tried their best to try to make it blend in to the surrounding. I think they're fabulous. Yeah, I think they they're are. Fabulous. They are. They are epic. And I think what worries people now is that cooling towers are being, the, 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 you know, the coal fired power station days are over, and that they're, they're going to all disappear. But the amount of money it, it would take just to maintain one of those towers is just mm -mm -mm. you know you can see even now how the colors changing on the on the concrete now they're not they're not working and that will just eventually eat its way into the so they've got to go it, it, they yeah go. they would eat, it's the, inevitable. they would they would be yeah. they would be dangerous yeah. you know tell me about the film the film well, I was approached by Telford and Reekin, um about the festival imagination that they were they were doing, and they said, "Would you, you know, be interested in making a film?" Well, as everybody knows, I make films under the Telford Ultimate Guide name for my YouTube channel, and I thought I had a month to do it. Normally, it'll take me three months to make a film. A month. A month. Right. And the, one of the key things was to involve some of the people in the gorge and tell tell the story of the Ironbridge Gorge, and you know, in an hour and a half, that's a big task in itself and um so a couple of lovely ladies from the facebook group the, the facebook page um iron bridge yesterday through the gorge yesteryear and marcus Keane from telford memories as well um we all got together around a table and said right how can we do this so um it's a beautiful film it, and i do you know what i watched it and i've never made a film that made me feel emotional because it's just the way it's put together and it tells the story from the iron bridge from when it was formed you know when it was the iron bridge was 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 near the seychelles in latitude and that's where the a lot of the limestone formed etc and through the ice age what created the gorge how it was done all the way through to the early industries come in and the flooding that we've had the landslips it's mm. it's a real interesting story and how um, long is this film it's an hour and a half you did an hour and a half film in a month yes come um, on. and i don't know <laughs> I don't, well, it proves I can make films quicker than. <laughs> do, do you know, but I, I never actually thought of making a film because I'm a more of a new townie and that's what I make films about. And um, I never thought about making a film about the Ironbridge Iron Bridge Gorge, but I, I learned a lot about yeah. it as well. Um, especially the flooding and the history and the devastation at Jackfield that, that the, the landslip did and everything. And do you know, one of the conditions were I, I wanted this film to give something back to the community so you know i'm not charging it's a, it's a completely free event where you can yeah you, you um i mean it's it, it's pretty much think we've, as of today we've got 25 tickets left where, where and where and when so it's it's on tomorrow night right. which is uh, yeah sunday night um 7 30 and it's in the festival hub so it's the big year that's in dale m park right beautiful beautiful venue for it um and it's on there from seven up from seven thirty. Tickets are available. We've only, like I say, we've only got twenty five tickets, and they go up. They will as tickets will cease around about four o'clock today. So if you want to come, you need to you need to uh, you need to get those tickets. Get or, online. Yeah, or you can perhaps email me direct, and that's at um, Telford Ultimate Guide at gmail dot com. Um, it's not to be missed. Um, if people do miss it, then I am preparing um in november is i'm having one of my movie nights my ultimate guide nights which is the, the proceeds of that are going to um the seven hospice and we're going to show the film there as okay. well so, so we'll mention that again yeah, when we yeah, get near yeah, the, time. Near, near the time tell me about this telford ultimate guide this youtube channel so. yeah so the youtube channel what do you know what i want you got so many apps you, you? I, I have i have <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> but it's all about actually giving something back and and history is one of those things where I feel people learn more about history when it's in a a video format where you can watch things because a lot of people are on YouTube watching this that the other you know and that's a great medium for this so it tells you I try to give history in a kind of layman's terms type way way and that's why the walks are so popular is because the walks are about history so we deliver we deliver history i mean i hope next year that we will be providing um tours and things for schools for children um in a way and deliver away it's just about getting history and long after i've gone now when i've gone all that will still be there for, mm. for generations mm -hmm. to enjoy you mm. know and it's an imprint it, it, somebody's got to do it mm -hmm. <laughs> 
as I say, you've got many hats on because you've got a full-time job as well. Yeah? yeah, I actually am a caretaker coordinator, so I look after a lot of the um, Telford and Reeking caretakers, which is a, a, one of the best jobs I've ever done. You're a caretaker or caretaker? I was a caretaker initially because obviously, as you know... At school? Yeah, I was a landscape gardener initially. Oh, here we go. Go on. Uh, yeah, well, you, you, I retired just so I could have a bit more time to work on my projects. Then I kind of... Caretaking wasn't enough for me, so I wanted, I missed employing people, I missed training people, I missed developing people, and then I, I saw this job for this coordinator. Um, thankfully I got the job, after, but the job description was really long. <laughs> right, right, I, don't know, right. I don't know if I can do this, right. but actually it's one of the, I work with a fantastic team. And, Around Telford then? Yeah, it? and I work yeah. on flexi time, so I can wrap everything in and out of what I want to do, so it gives me the flexibility to actually do, um, you know what I mean, I manage around about 30 different schools, you know, making sure that, the, the, you know, we're, our caretakers are delivering the product and the quality. So, you know, I love yeah, it. Yeah, you do yeah, love I'm it. Yeah, very no. busy. And the last time I had you in this studio, you were sitting in a different chair, just slightly over there yeah, on the other yeah. side of the studio, because we were talking about your, your show home review channel that you do as well. <laughs> yeah, well, we're still doing, um, me, and my good la my, me and my good lady, we're still doing that. Very, very busy. Um, but the, the great thing about the show homes channel is that, we don't have to do that all the time. We can just go away for a, for a, a weekend and do do ten houses. But obviously, our YouTube channel still earns us money um, and keeps things going because people are watching our. I mean, we get we get thousands and thousands of people viewing our videos every day, mm. looking for new houses. Yeah. Um, you both go at that. If you've not seen it, have a look because they go in there and they oh this is nice. Now the nice spacious hall here. Look, there's yeah, a cupboard there. That'll yeah. be useful because that not there's not much storage in new houses. That, that Steve. is it. Yeah. So that's the whole ethos the show homes online is actually again like the walks and stuff is giving you a no nonsense um view of things i think we're like I think a lot of people call us the um, Phil and Kirsty <laughs> of the new homes. <laughs> the homes will. I love it. Clearly, okay. I've got more hair than Phil. Obviously, one thing you don't do much of, I suggest, is sit down. Yeah, I know. My wife says I've got. My wife says I've got ADHD. Maybe, mm, maybe she might. You know, oh, yeah. maybe that fast. But no, life is. Do you know something? You've got to cram as much as you can because it's not a dress rehearsal. You've no, got to. I've heard that and before. do you know if you can give? If, if you're in the position to be able to give, to raise money for charity, why not? Mm. And it. And and that's what I was saying to the good lady. The you know the ladies outside in reception there. You've got to make. You've got to make your mark in life. You know because you. A lot of people just. You know. Like, Life's valuable, and you've got to do what you've got to do. Okay, this film about Telford. Yeah. It's in this yurt. Yeah. In Dale End Park. You can't miss the yurt in Dale no, End it's, Park. It's an amazing building. Telford Ultimate Guide at gmail dot com. Yes. For Want to have a look at that and get the tickets. That is tomorrow night. Yeah, it is tomorrow night. I am actually very nervous about it. To be fair. Why? Um, I don't know because this is a, it's a really big audience there. I mean, we've and like I said, we've sold over a hundred. I think it's one hundred and fifty tickets. That's. That's something else that is. That's on another level of what I'm used to. Mm -hmm. But it, it's just nice. If, the trouble was last year, the, they had the Telford 50, and I was sort of pipped at the post about making a film, and I was a bit annoyed about that because I thought, you know, the whole Telford 50 thing is about people, you know, making making things, making films, and I, uh, I'm i glad to be asked this time yeah, around. And So then we've got the Towers Walk again today. Yes. Is it full? Unfortunately... It is fully booked. Is it full again? Let's just make that clear. Fully booked. Um, I know. Do you know what? I, I, I might have to. I might have to run it one more time. I would, that this was going to be the next question. Time, that was going to be think, the next question. I think it probably will be. Yeah. Um, and I, I, we've got the weather for it today, and it's going to be incredible. It's just, it's just so iconic, and I think, I think people won't ever see the significance of this walk until they've gone mm -mm. and. By, by the end of this year, they will not be there. That landmark will not right. be there. OK, so it's booked up today. It's booked up today, unfortunately. But if you do another, you will tell us. I will do. And I think on, if everybody... Um, my um, Facebook page is Telford Ultimate Guide Walks Uncovered. And um, they can go on there. And we've got an events section because we're coming up to our year anniversary. And um, you ask anybody, it's it's really, really good fun, our walks are. They're not, they're not like any other walking group. And we've obviously recruited new members from our 
from the, uh, the original from war. The, yeah, from yeah. the original war, yeah. who've come and actually think, actually, walking's fun. And it actually, is. a young kid the other yeah. day, he said, oh, my God, he says, this is the best day of my life. Really? <laughs> he did, yeah. There you go. Well, you tell us if you do another one, yeah? I will do, yeah. All right, lovely to see you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Thanks very much. much. That's Steve Bowers, a uh, man of many parts, <laughs> most of them working. <laughs> and uh, if you're not on that walk today around the cooling towers then he probably will do another one we'll just we'll lean on him a bit to do another one and uh, and when that happens we'll let you know